Hi guys, so if you watched uh, the previous video, uh, I guess in this playlist or whenever you see this, um, I'm taking a discipleship course and what I decided to do was to take notes while I'm going through the course um, for each module and then when I have questions, I go and research for the answers and then that I add those um, I add those, I guess, discoveries to my notes, which I'm going to share with you guys. Um, so if you have, I mean, if you're interested in the topic, you can just click on it. And um, um, the discipleship course that I'm taking, I'm going to have in the description. Um, it is by Pastor uh, Richard Lorenzo, Richard Anthony Lorenzo. So you can definitely check him out. Um, he's, he's a cool guy. Um, so far, I've only done the, f the first module and it's on the gospel and I thought it was great. So I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna get right into um, my notes. I'm gonna read it. I'm just gonna read it because I, it's just too much to memorize and I really just wanna get this stuff out to you guys. And so, um, yeah, it's gonna help me retain the information and then you guys get to learn as well, okay? All right, so first module is called the gospel, okay? So the gospel translated means the good news. The word gospel occurs 93 times in the Bible. The good news more specifically encompasses the wholeness of scripture. It is the good news that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for our sins and rose again after three days. Why is Jesus Christ dying for our sins good news? It's good news because in the Old Testament, there were 613 Mosaic laws that God gave to Moses that the Israelites would have to abide by. And if you... If you broke just one of these laws, it was called sin. And the wage of sin was and still is death. But because sin was equal to death, God gave the Israelites an opportunity to atone for their sins um, by allowing them to cancel out that debt. All right, so the only way to cancel out that debt was by blood. You see, blood equals life. And if you think about it, without blood in your veins, you would die. That is a fact. <laughs> so to atone for sin, which equals death, the Israelites had to sacrifice an innocent life. And so they were given instruction by God on the proper way to do that by using certain animals for the various rituals that will cover their sins. Um, I would say sins and also like transgressions, but anyways, but this was only a temporary solution. Okay, so it's often so what I'm adding here was some additional notes that I looked up. Um, I just I just wanted more information on like the sacrificing. So I added this in. Okay, I think when most people talk about the gospel, they don't add this, but I want to look it up. because I was curious. Okay. It's often misunderstood how often these animals, how often these animal sacrifices were practiced. Most people incorrectly think or would assume that a person living during the Old Testament was required to sacrifice an animal every time he or she sinned against God, and that wasn't the case. And this is something I thought. I thought, oh my God, every time they sin every day, they have to go and sacrifice the animal, but that's not how it works. Um, so one day of the year in particular called the day of atonement, that was the day used to cover all of the sins, um, committed by the Israelites, I believe as a nation. Um, and then over the course of the year, they did have specific events and feasts as well as daily burnt offering offerings that required animal sacrifice. But it wasn't like if you committed a sin every day, you would have to sacrifice an animal. But needless to say, a lot of animals were sacrificed. And I just wanted to note that um, as I learn and I get more information, 
if I find anything that's incorrect in um, my research, I will make, you know, an updated video just to um, let you guys know. Okay. Um, and if you guys find any discrepancies in, in what I'm saying, you can just definitely add it to the comments. Okay. So during the Day of Atonement, a series of several steps and symbolic rituals were to be performed that day. But the most important ritual entailed the presentation of two goats as the primary mechanism for Israel's atonement. Now, this is very interesting, so please pay attention because I did not know this. It's very interesting. The Israelites were to take two male goats and present them before the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle, where they would cast lots, which was a way to choose by random, which one of the two goats would be sacrificed to the Lord and which goat would be used as the scapegoat, which would then be set free into the wilderness. Um, this ritual was a foreshadowing of Jesus dying on the cross for our sins where he both removed our sins and shed his own blood in order to atone for our own sins permanently. Okay, so the animal, the animal, um, the animal sacrifice was just a covering, like it didn't remove the sin. But when Jesus died for our sins and he shed his blood, he permanently, like he washes his blood washes our our sins clean. Okay, so. Um, Throughout the different time periods of the Old Testament, God would have his prophets call Israel to repentance because they would constantly rebel against their covenant or marriage with God. So another word for covenant means marriage. Um, and so they rebelled by refusing to stop their idolatrous and wicked practices by worshiping false gods and idols they even sacrificed their sons and daughters to worthless worthless gods and god was really furious but we're moving on <laughs> there are some scriptures in the old testament that begin to implicitly reveal a future messiah in my opinion the most obvious scripture revealing the coming of jesus is in deuteronomy uh, chapter 18 verses 15 through 19 um, which reads, so I'm only going to read line 15, but I'm going to add the full scripture in, in the description just because, you know, I prefer the KGV version, but I, you guys may have to look at it in different versions to understand. Okay. So I'm just going to read verse 15. So the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren. So he will raise up a prophet, you know, from, from that line of um of a line from the israelites which you know um i think Ju jesus came from the line of judah i believe okay um that wasn't that was not part of my teaching i'm trying to go off, i'm trying to go by memory <clears throat> anyway so um god will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto me unto unto him ye shall hearken so unto him you will listen right you'll listen to him and yeah so i'll leave the full version um so you can get uh, more context and you can like you know meditate it you can keep reading over and over so that you can understand and that it makes sense to you okay so moving on and so the messiah came born of a virgin named mary who was implanted by the holy ghost to prove that he was god and he didn't come from the seed of man which contained sin he came here by spiritual means. He came as the son of God who is perfect. Jesus was born perfect and sinless in order for him to be the perfect and last sacrifice in order to not just cover our sins, but to wash them from us. Okay. Uh, Jesus lived among us, experiencing the trials and tribulations of life, but never did he succumb to sin. Okay. So Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan by John the Baptist. Uh, when Jesus approached John to be baptized, John asked Jesus, why am I baptizing you? You should be baptizing me, if anything. And Jesus said, to fulfill all righteousness. Um, and what he meant by that phrase is debated. Um, but Jesus came 
also as an example. So this is this is what I'm saying. This is what I think. But Jesus came also as an example of how we should live. So I just think it's pretty straightforward. Um, baptism is a commitment to being reborn spiritually. So after Jesus emerged from the water of his baptism, the Spirit of God descended upon him and a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And after Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, I believe, he was tempted by the devil who was unsuccessful. Okay, henceforth, Jesus went on to perform miracles, signs and wonders, healing the sick and diseased, as well as preaching for everyone to repent, saying, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus had fulfilled all of the Old Testament prophecies, which I will discuss in another video. He, it, there's a few prophecies in there, it's pretty cool. Anyway, um, well, duh. <laughs> Let me continue. The one I will mention today is the crucifixion, which you will find uh, was prophesied in the book Isaiah. Uh, chapter 53 verses 1 through 5 and I think I put all five yeah so this is the KG version um, I put um, all five because I think it's just easier to understand but it states who hath believed our our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground he hath no form no no comeliness and when and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him um i i think they were saying jesus wasn't good looking like he was just plain that, that's what i'm understanding from the scripture but let me keep reading he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not so this is just talking about the, the process of the uh, crucifixion i believe yeah surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed so yes it's definitely talking about the, uh, the crucifixion um so what well, what i'm trying to say is i know for sure like the last lines were talking about um his crucifixion but like the the first like three lines i'm not sure if they're just talking about how he grew up like no one was really you know um, gravitating towards him because he's plain looking or was this like you know while he was um, in the process of being like cruci crucified did no one just you know like were they just thinking like oh this guy like who is he because he's not you know he's I guess beautiful or you know attractive so that's just those are just my questions like I said it's good to have questions so anyway um so yeah, so God was crucified willingly to give us salvation, as it says in John chapter 3, 16. And I'm going to read it to you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Um, so God did not come to earth to condemn us or judge us. We were already condemned from birth because of what happened with Adam and Eve in the garden. Um, so when Jesus was on the cross, he said it was done. He had finished what he had come here to do and he had died. Um, Jesus had performed many miracles, which are too numerous to count, um, as, they, as they have said in the Bible. So um, I just listed six um, miracles, six of them that he did. But in a future video, I'm going to um, I'm going to I'm going to let you tell you guys. I'm going to give you guys a full list of, of all of his miracles that are recorded in the Bible. So, miracle, one of the miracles he did, he turned water into wine, a very famous one, very well-known uh, miracle. He healed the sick and the diseased. Jesus cast out evil spirits from people. Jesus healed the immobile or paralyzed. He healed the blind. 
Jesus raised Lazarus and others from the dead, and Jesus fed 5,000 women and children, okay? And like I said in another video, I will give you the full list of all the miracles that are in the Bible. I believe there's a, like 30, I think 36 or something, or 37, maybe more. But yeah, I think it's in the 30 range. Okay, so next point. Uh, Jesus further proved that he was our Lord and Savior by his resurrection three days after his crucifixion. He disciple His disciples were hesitant on whether it was actually him, which that is also um, a bit disputed about if they were doubting if he was the Messiah or whether they, they just wasn't sure like if they if they um like people are questioning whether they believed he was actually the messiah or or they knew he was the messiah and they were just not sure if this man who was saying he was jesus was actually jesus if that makes sense okay so um his disciples were hesitant i believe that they were just hesitant and they just wanted to make sure it was actually him i, I believe that they knew yeah he's the messiah for sure but we gotta make sure this is actually him. Okay, so his disciples were hesitant on whether it was actually him, but the evidence was found in the holes in his hands and feet. Jesus was in his glorified body, which gave him access to the spirit, and he was able to walk through walls and levitate. Um, our glorified bodies is something that we can also look forward to in the future. As long as you're saved. That sounds so mean. But it's true. Um, Jesus appeared to his disciples for a period of 40 days, ministering to them, and he tells them to remain in Jerusalem until they receive the Holy Ghost, which allowed them to increase the numbers of converts by the thousands. Okay, so the good news is that all you need to do is believe with all of your heart and all of your soul that Jesus came and died for our sins believe that the father loves you enough to sacrifice his only begotten son repent and when you truly repent you will be filled with the holy ghost um, who will transform your life just the way he did mine um, if you don't know what your purpose is now this is just an add-on but I'm, i wrote it here so because i don't want to forget if you don't know what your purpose is if you're feeling lost confused or alone whatever you're feeling once you accept jesus in your life i promise you without a doubt as long as you have faith in him your life will change 100 percent. and um once i i know for me i'm just speaking from personal experience i don't know about other people but when I, if you if you listen to my I guess my testimony video or my journey is titled my journey um, I go over what I did um, I was really like praying to God from my heart I was praying every day the Lord's Prayer on my way to work um, on my way back home just walking you know and one day I had this dream and I saw Jesus and he gave me the Holy Ghost okay like it came out of his body and into me he gave the Holy Ghost to me now when that happened and I woke up I I could comprehend how there can be a father how there can be a son and how there can be the, the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit like it made sense to me um, it makes sense how they can be one yet be three persons because they're one, but yet they're three. And um, so don't don't be discouraged if that part of it doesn't make sense to you. You kind of just have to trust it. And honestly, um, my heart, I don't know. You know, it's maybe, I, I feel like maybe I was just really connecting to Jesus because Jesus is the one who gave that prayer um, in the Bible, you know, the Lord's Prayer. Um, Jesus told his disciples to pray that prayer. So I was praying, but I was praying to Jesus, obviously. Um, and, you know, he answered my prayer. So you don't have to understand everything. You just have to have faith. And then really, once you receive the Holy Spirit, I swear to you, it just starts to make more sense. 
we will never be able to grasp 100% the Trinity while we're alive. I, I believe that when we go to heaven, we will get the revelation and maybe we'll be able to handle it. I have no idea. Um, but you will, it will make, it will feel comfortable. You will be able to accept that. Okay. Um, listen, if we could understand God 100%, then what would be the point? No, God has to keep some mysteries to himself, right? So he can reveal to us. Um, and I'm looking forward to that day. And um, that was the gospel. So, um, of course, when I, if anyone asks me about the gospel, I won't deliver it in this, you know, so like, you know, in this way, you know, so dry. But what's important to me is that I'm able to understand why Jesus, Jesus's blood was so important. Hopefully that came across in this video, but I'll be able, I'll be able to know why they were sacrificing animals. And, you know, actually, I feel like I got some revelation on the animal sacrificing and why it was so ritualistic. Um, but, you know, I think I need to meditate on that more and then I can like let you guys know um, in another video. But like when, before, I don't know, I used to think of the animals and I used to feel like bad for the animals. But when you, that dream that I had about Jesus, the love was so intense that I would have died for Jesus. Like I would, have, I would sacrifice myself for Jesus. For Jesus, like that's how much. Cause you, you in my dream, I could feel that he was sacrificing himself for me. So I'm like, yo, of course, I got you. Like you need me. To, you don't have to ask me twice. You know. So I want you, whoever's watching, and they they're like feeling sorry for the animals. I just know that. Listen, I, I it, it may have been an, an honor for these animals to be sacrificed for God. Um, and remember, God came down from heaven to sacrifice himself, and he was sacrificed in one of the worst ways possible. So, you know, yeah, you can feel sorry for the animals, but you gotta, what about Jesus? Like, Jesus came here and got all whipped and all kinds of stuff, spit on, cursed at, the worst, he was betrayed. All these terrible things happened to him, and he loved us so much, and he was willing to go through that for us. So, um... Don't wanna, don't be one of those people about don't be one of those people that are like oh my god the animals okay well what about Jesus you know and like I said when when you feel how much God loves you and you know that you're willing to sacrifice your own life for Jesus um I'm sure the the animals I'm sure they I don't know I don't know how I don't know in what way but I'm sure God somehow you know covered them some way somehow. I just really believe that and you know like I said we won't know everything until we get to to heaven all right so I'm gonna leave you guys with that um, until the next uh, module that I do I have to take a look at it but I just want to get this out to you guys because I just think it's interesting and hopefully you know in the future when someone asks you about the gospel you know you'll be able to give them the clean-cut version you know Jesus, Mary, crucifixion, Holy Ghost, this and that. And then when people ask you in, in, in more in, um, when, what, what am I trying to say? No, when, when people ask you for more in-depth answers, you're able to give that to them and not have to search for it because you kind of have it. All right. So if you guys have any more questions about what I read to you, um, my findings you can put them in the comp in the comments because that'll also help me and it will just actually like will make us better Christians you know we're not gonna know everything um, but at least we can be confident enough to know that we don't know everything and we can just be honest instead of someone asking us and we just we don't know what we don't know you know all right so I'll see you guys next time